everybody, welcome to Kid Venture this morning. We are glad that you're here. We're going to do a new song that goes with our new piece in God's Great Story. And our new piece is the birth, life, and sacrifice of Jesus. So we're going to do some songs about Jesus today. This, this one's called, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. And there's some motions with this. We want to show them to you real quick. So everybody make an L with their hand. And then uh, the uh, sign language for Lord is you put it kind of to your chest and go, Lord, like that. So everybody try that. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Yeah, and then it comes to this part where it goes, You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my debt to pay this is like wiping your sins away debt to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky lord i lift your name on high like that all right let's do it Sing that part again. Here we go. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. Good job! Yay! Woo! Okay, it's time to take a look at this month's memory verse. Everybody say, Joshua 1, 8. Joshua 1, 8. Study this book continually. Study this book continually. Meditate on it day and night. Meditate on it day and night. So you may be sure to obey so you may be sure to obey everything written in it everything written in it only then will you succeed only then will you succeed nice job you guys now let's take out some words joshua 1 8 study this book 
continually meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it only then will you succeed great job everybody all right let's sing another song Okay, everybody, we have another song for you today, and this one is called Savior of the World, and it's got really easy motions. You can do it. Uh, everybody point up. It goes like this. The Savior of the world is coming. So the world is just the shape of the world, round, and then he's coming because he started out in heaven and he came down to earth, okay? And then there's this part that goes... Come on, Gabriel, and go tell Mary, the Savior of the world is coming down. Remember when the angel Gabriel showed up to tell Mary that she was going to have a baby Jesus? So this song is about when he came to earth. All right, let's try it. Welcome to Kidventure today. We're glad you're back to discover more treasures from God's great story and to find out how amazing that Bible really is. We've just come through the five pieces of the Old Testament. Do you remember what they were? We had creation, we had Egypt, we had the promised land, we had judges and kings, and prophets and taken captive. Right, nice job. And do you remember the big problem God's people kept on making? Right, they kept on disobeying the Lord and did things their own way. Bad choices. But God still wanted to be friends with them. Yes. But no matter who God sent to help his people, they kept on turning his back on him. He sent Moses, he sent Joshua, the judges, the kings, even the prophets. Every time they'd obey for a while, but they always went back to doing their own way. It made God so angry and sad. And for 400 years between the Old and New Testament, God seemed to be silent. No prophet spoke for God or wrote a book from him during this time that we call the 400 years of silence.
sure would be nice to hear from God right now, don't you think? So God's people waited and waited to hear from God again. They waited for God to send them a new leader that would help them, who would deliver them, who would show them how to get to know God again. They forgot about the prophecies that God would send a child to be a wonderful counselor, mighty God, and Prince of Peace. You know who that is, don't you? Jesus, right. Today we're heading on to the New Testament. Everyone say yay. Yay! Which reminds me of three phases we'll need your help with. They're a little bit different. The first one you know, and to make a long story short, you'll say, too late. Let's go ahead and practice that one. And to make a long story short, too late. Then something incredible happened. You'll say, no way. Let's practice that one. Something incredible happened. No way. And the third one. But they had a big problem with that, and you'll say, oh well. Let's go ahead and practice that one. And they had a big problem with that. Oh well. The second part of God's great story. He still shows his love for me. God sent his son down to earth. The world would be changed by Jesus' birth. Which leads us to part six of God's great story. The birth, life, and sacrifice of Jesus. As the New Testament starts something, incredible happens. No way! Way! God sent an angel to a young girl named Mary, telling her she was going to be the mother of the Son of God. And from a young girl who had never been married would come the Savior of the world. Then something else incredible happened. No way! Way! And Hello? Hi, Jamie. It's Janice. I was just reading in the New Testament and I found something really cool. Did you know that God sent out invitations to Jesus' birthday party? No way, he did? Yep. He invited the wise men from a faraway place and guided them by a miracle star. And then he invited the shepherds with a bunch of angels and told them where to find Jesus in the manger. That's so cool, but I've got to go. Bye. Bye. And to make a long story short, too late. Jesus, the Son of God, was born in a stable with farm animals all around. Hee-haw, hee-haw. Bah. Moo. And the shepherds came. And later on, the wise men. And they decided to stop by King Herod's place and let him know about the star they saw and that there was a new king born in Israel. He pretended to be interested, but King Herod had a big problem with that. Oh, well. He was a bad king and didn't want any new baby taking his place as king of Israel. So he did an evil thing. He told his soldiers to go wipe out all the little children. Fortunately, something incredible happened. No way, way. The angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Oh, Joseph. Am I dreaming? Yes, but pay attention anyway. The angel warned him about the King Herod's evil plan. He told him to go down to Egypt and wait until it was safe again. So that's what they did. Well, Jesus and his family lived in Egypt for a few years, and when things were safe, they moved back to Israel. And Jesus grew up learning how to be a carpenter from his earthly father, Joseph. The Bible tells us that as Jesus grew up, he never did anything wrong. Do you know what that means? He never got in trouble. Can you believe it? But now, let's flash forward a bit. When he was all grown up, he went to visit his cousin, John the Baptist, and something incredible happened. No way, way. And it is today, Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River by the John the Baptist. What would have stated that he was well into the water, the Holy Spirit came down and rested on him like a dove. Then out of the sky came a booming voice of God the Father telling everyone, this is my beloved son, whom I am totally pleased. That's right. From there, the Son of God headed out to the desert to be tested by Satan. It was like Jesus needed his baptism, God's special work and help to be tested before he was ready to begin his special work. The full story at 11.
And to make a long story short, too late. After Jesus was baptized and tested, he headed up to Galilee and started calling disciples his special followers who would be with him. And something incredible happened. No way! Way! Jesus would walk up to big, gruff fishermen guys and say, follow me. And they would leave their boats and nets and fish, leave everything and become followers of Jesus. He went up to a not very well-liked tax collector and called him to be a disciple. He called 12 guys to be with him, learn from him, and help him in his work. And something incredible happened. No way! Way! Hello! Oh, wrong instrument. I wonder what that is. Let's try this one. Hello! Hi, it's me! Check this out. I was reading about Jesus' power over nature, like over animals and water and even the weather. He made fish swim into a net. He walked on water. He even made a really stormy, windy day. Just stop and be calm just with his words. You think that's cool? I just read this book where Jesus healed 10 guys with leprosy and other guys, he would just touch them. And if they were blind, they could see. If they were deaf, they could hear. Or if they were paralyzed people, they weren't paralyzed. He was even better than the best doctor. Okay, that was pretty good. But right here, Jesus just brought his dead guy, Lazarus, back to life. Whoa, that's powerful. Hey, I got to hang up. I'm gonna go read this book some more and see what else I can learn. Yeah, me too. See you later. Bye. Bye. See ya. And to make a long story short, too, too late. Late, late. Remember the Pharisees? They were the snooty, stuck-up leaders in the temple who were supposed to be teaching people about God. When they heard all about the amazing things that Jesus was doing, and they had a big problem with that, oh well, they were used to having people look at them and think they were important. Now Jesus is getting all the attention. Well, Jesus didn't just do miracles. He taught people about God. He showed them what he was really like. And people had never heard anyone teach like Jesus did. He acted like he knew God personally, and he did. He also taught them about what God wanted from them for everyone to believe in Jesus and give their lives to him. And the Pharisees had a big problem with that. Oh, no. But now they were getting angry. They started thinking of ways to get rid of Jesus. He was getting way too much attention. He was becoming way too popular. Crowds of people were following him around. Then something incredible happened. No way. Way. In the other news today, a crowd of thousands was following Jesus near the Sea of Galilee. He stopped to teach them and ended up teaching them all day long. By evening, the crowd was starving, choosing to listen to Jesus rather than eat. One witness reported that Jesus borrowed the lunch of a young boy, just some bread and fish. Then something incredible happened. No way. Way. I have someone who saw it all. Hello there. Can you tell us what you saw? Sure. I saw Jesus pray for a little lunch, give the fish and the bread to his disciples to hand out, and all of a sudden the food started multiplying. Jesus had created more bread and more fish so that over 5,000 people could eat a fish dinner. It seems that there's some amazing things are happening in Galilee. Join us for the special report later in the broadcast. And to make a long story short, the Pharisees had a big problem with that. Oh well. And now they were mad. They wanted Jesus out of the way. They really wanted to see Jesus dead. But what they didn't realize, what they didn't understand, was that Jesus dying was part of God's plan. That's why God had sent him to earth. 
That's why he had never sinned or done anything wrong so that when he died, he could pay for all of our sins. Remember back in the Old Testament, and even though the people kept doing things their own way, God still wanted to be friends with them. Yes! As long as people were choosing to sin, we couldn't be friends with God. That's why God sent Jesus. Through his whole life, he pointed people to God, and when he died, he paid the way for people to be friends with God again. Are you seeing this? Yeah. They just arrested Jesus. What did he ever do wrong? Nothing. He was the perfect person. Now they're nailing him to a cross. They're hanging him up to die. Did you think it was going to be easy to pay for all the sins of all the people in all the world? I guess not. Now he's dying. They're taking him down and burying him in a tomb. Now they're rolling a huge, heavy stone in front of the doorway of the tomb. Jesus is dead? Can the Son of God really die? He had to. There was no other way for us to be friends with God. It just doesn't seem fair. To Jesus, I mean. And to make a long story short, too late. Jesus really died. The Romans and the Pharisees meant it for evil to hurt Jesus and stop his teaching. But God meant it for good, to save the world and be friends with people. But then something incredible happened. No way, way. On the third day, he began to wake. The ground began to shake. The stone was tossed aside. The soldiers ran to hide. At the tomb's door, there stood the Holy Lord. He had risen from the dead just like he always said. He's alive! Hello? I can't believe it. He came back to life? He's alive! I know. I know. He paid for our sins by dying, but he also gave us eternal life by coming back to life. That's so awesome. I didn't think God would just leave him hanging there after he paid such a huge price for us. Right. It wouldn't have made much sense to have a Savior who wasn't alive. That's right. Hey, I'm going to read what happened next. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. And to make a long story short, too late. God still wanted to be friends with people. Yes. God sent his only son to be the Savior of the world. He was born on earth and grew up never doing anything wrong. Then Jesus died, paying for all of our sins, and then came back to life to be our living Savior. But the story doesn't end here. All the incredible things that Jesus had done was just the beginning. It was like striking a match and lighting a fuse for the explosion that was about to happen. But if you want to know what happens next, you have to come back next week. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the incredible gift of your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to read the Bible and study your word and just help us to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to all of our friends and family. Thank you for this message today and bringing us all together. Help us to have an incredible week together. In your precious name we pray. Amen. See you next time. Bye. Puzzle time. Okay, everybody, Mr. Kevin here. It's so good uh, to be with you. And, uh, oh, that was such a great lesson today. I love the part that where we got to hear about Jesus being born and then about how his, his ministry and how he healed and taught people. And then he went to a cross and he died, but then he came back to life. This is so good. We have a living Savior. This is so cool. Well, I wanted to review our puzzle pieces with you real quick. And so uh, let's just go right down the list of what we've had so far. The very first one where, where God made the world, what do we call that? Creation, right. And, and one of the most important stories in the creation story is Adam and Eve. Because when they chose to disobey God and eat the fruit, all of a sudden there was a reason that we needed a Savior. 
because everybody after Adam and Eve was born with sin. We kind of have this want to, to do the wrong thing sometimes, don't we? Well, then the next, the next puzzle piece is Egypt, right? And they went down to Egypt uh, because there was a famine and they stayed for a long time, but then the Pharaoh made them slaves. Oh, that's terrible. But then God sent a deliverer. Remember the deliverer? His name was Moses and he led the Israelites out of Egypt. So awesome. And then he led them to their new land. Remember the next piece? promised land right he led him to the promised land and joshua was the new leader and he led him in to, to, to kick out all the bad people in the land so that they could have their special place and then uh the next section do you remember what it was judges and kings and the judges were warrior judges yeah let's let's go get them and uh and then god gave them kings like king saul and King David, uh, King David wrote the song book in the middle of our Bible called the Psalms. And he was such a good king. The Bible says that he was a man after God's heart. Pretty cool. And then his son's name was King Solomon. And he was also a good king. Then there was a bunch of kings after him that weren't so good. So we have creation, Egypt, promised land, judges and kings, and then it starts to get bad again remember this prophets and taking captive right and they were taken off to babylon as captives which is not good right not good but then we moved into the new testament this week and uh our, our first piece of the new testament is all about jesus and we spent the whole day on him because, oh my gosh, he is so important. He's God's son. He's the savior of the world. Jesus is the one. He's the awesome one. All right. And so our piece today, remember what it was called? The birth, life, and sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus didn't just come to be born. He didn't just come to grow up. He came to be a sacrifice for us so we could be friends with God pretty awesome all right i can't wait for next week hey uh we've been working on the books of the bible we've been working on our puzzle pieces of the whole bible do you remember what the one big picture that all the puzzle pieces make when we put it together god wants to be friends with us okay let's do our bible book song and we're going to be done for today see ya I've got a totally cool new way to learn the books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, that's all the 1st and 2nd Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes and the Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, adventure this year in Kidventure as we're questing for lost treasure. Here's our mascot, Kidventure. We've been learning God's great story, the Bible. Here we are at Big a Bible Island. Thanks for joining us today. Hope to see you at the Zoom chat. Bye for now.